In this video, we will learn very important CISA exam testing concept that is asymmetric encryption. Let us understand the difference between symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption. Single key is used to encrypt and decrypt message, whereas in asymmetric, two sets of keys is used. One is private key, another is public key. Key is said to be symmetric because encryption key is same as the decryption key. In asymmetric encryption, message encrypted by private key can only be decrypted by corresponding public key. Similarly, message encrypted by public key can only be decrypted by corresponding public key. Faster computation and processing, whereas asymmetric encryption, slower computation and processing. So, symmetric encryption is, is inexpensive as compared to asymmetric, whereas asymmetric is expensive as compared to symmetric. Major disadvantage in symmetric is challenge of sharing key with other party. Asymmetric no such challenge as two different keys are required. Now let us understand who have access to asymmetric keys. So for example, Mr. A and Mr. B, they are having their private key as well as public key. Now their public key will be available in public domain. So it's accessible to all, it's in public domain but their private key will be accessible only to respective owners. This is very important concept. Let us take one example. Mr. A want to send an email to Mr. B, but he want to have this email confidential. So objective here is confidentiality. Mr. A will be having four options. Either send us private key, send us public key, receive us private key or receive us public key. So, he cannot use sender's private key because sender's public key which can be used for decryption is available in public domain and hence confidentiality cannot be ensured. Anyone can decrypt this particular message. Sender's public key. Now, sender's public key can be decrypted only by using sender's private key. But sender's private key will not be available with receiver and hence receiver cannot decrypt the message. Receiver's public private key, but receiver's private key will not be available with the sender and hence sender cannot encrypt the message. Yes, to ensure confidentiality, he need to encrypt the message using receiver's public key. Sender can use receiver's public key that is available in public domain and only a receiver can encrypt it using receiver's private key. This will ensure confidentiality. Let us take one more example. A want to send email to B. But here he is not concerned about the confidentiality. What he wants is authenticity and non-repudiation. So again four options. For authenticity, sender should have something unique that is not available to anyone else. So Sender should have some unique key which is not accessible to others. Sender's private key is the only thing that is available with sender only and it authenticates the sender of the email. So in such scenario, your answer should be sender's private key for encryption. This will ensure authenticity and non-reputation of email. Okay, so now in this question, our objective is confidentiality as well as authenticity. For confidentiality, we will use receiver's public key. And for authenticity, what we will do? We will create the hash of the message. Hash means message digest. And encrypt that particular hash using sender's private key. So, for confidentiality and authenticity, we will create hash and encrypt that hash using sender's private key. And full message, we will encrypt using receiver's public key. Now, objective is confidentiality and authenticity and integrity. So, as we discussed, for confidentiality, we will use receiver's public key. And for authenticity and integrity, same thing. We will create the hash of the message and then we will encrypt the hash using sender's private key. So, again, 
hash we will encrypt using senders private key this will give us authenticity and integrity and then we will encrypt full message using receiver's public key this will give us confidentiality Okay, so we have four options over here. Encrypt sender's private key, sender's public key, receiver's private key, and receiver's public key. So, let us recap confidentiality, where it will go. Oh, yeah, it went to receiver's public key. So, we need to remember this. Now, authentication. So, what is something unique that sender will have? No, no, yes, sender will have something unique that is known as his private key. Again, integrity. Let us see where it goes. <laughs> okay, again, send us private key. Non repudiation. So, objective is non repudiation. Then, oh, again, send us private key. But we need to remember for authentication, integrity, and non repudiation, we need to create hash and then hash need to be encrypted using send us private key. For confidentiality, full message need to be encrypted using receiver's public key one more exercise so my objective is confidentiality and authentication which bracket it should go yes so senders private key will ensure authentication and receiver's public key will ensure confidentiality now authentication and integrity oh i am not supposed to have confidentiality over here so i need not use receiver's public key only sender's private key field two so encrypt hash and use sender's private key oh here my objective is confidentiality and authentication and integrity so again i need to create the hash i need to use sender's private key for that hash and then i need to encrypt full message using receiver's public key Let us discuss some question as per CISA exam pattern. In public key encryption to secure message confidentiality. So my objective over here is confidentiality. As we already learned, for confidentiality we need to encrypt by receiver's public key. So answer will be encryption is done by public key and decryption will be done by private key. A will not be the correct option because encryption should be done by public key as well as C and D are not the correct option. Please remember if I am using public key I need to use private key for decryption. If I am using private key for encryption I need to use public key for decryption. In public key encryption to authenticate the sender of the message. So here my objective is authentication. For authenticate I need to have something unique. So I will use sender's private key that is the unique and available with sender only. So answer over here will be A. Hash of the message to be encrypted by sender's private key. Answer B will not be right option because sender's private key will not be available with receiver. Answer C is about receiver's private key, but receiver's private key will not be available with the sender. Answer C, D says about receiver's public key. No, for authentication something unique should be there. Public key is available in public domain and it's not unique. One more question. Objective, integrity of the message. So for integrity, send us private key. So the answer should be A. And these are the reason why option B, C and D will not be correct. In this question, our objective is to ensure confidentiality as well as authenticity. For confidentiality, receiver's public key and for authenticity, answer should be sender's private key. So your answer will be A. These are the reasons why option B, C and D will not be correct.
message authenticity and confidentiality is best achieved by encrypting hash of the message using the so here objectivity is authenticity and confidentiality for authenticity i need to have sender's private key and for confidentiality i need to encrypt message by using receiver's public key so here hash of the message using the senders private key and encrypted the message using the receiver's public key so a is the relevant answer over here because it is my both the objectives been fulfilled in a b will not be relevant answer c will not be relevant answer d will not be relevant answer over here greatest assurance about email authenticity can be ensured by each of the following here our objective is to ensure authenticity for authenticity answer should be encrypt hash by sender's private key so answer will be the pre-hash code is encrypted using sender's private key option a is not relevant or correct answer over here Option C is not relevant and correct answer over here. Option D is not correct answer over here. A message and message hash is encrypted by sender's private key. This will ensure. Please ensure. Sender's private key will ensure authentication, integrity and non-reputation. But it will not ensure confidentiality. So here, my, our answer will be authenticity and integrity. For confidentiality message to be encrypted using receiver's public key. A stockbroking firm sends invoices to the clients through email and wants reasonable assurance that no one has modified the newsletter. This objective can be achieved by so my objective is no one has modified the newsletter that is integrity so for integrity we know we need to encrypt hash by sender's private key firm is the sender over here so using firm's private key which of the following options increases the cost of cryptography Use of long asymmetric key rather than short. Higher the key length, higher the cost. In other A, C and D option, cost will in fact be reduced. Encryption of each of the following can be considered as an efficient use of PKI. Public key infrastructure. Our answer should be symmetric session key. Best use of PKI is to combine the best feature of symmetric as well as asymmetric encryption technique. Asymmetric encryption involves intensive and time consuming computations. In comparison, symmetric encryption is faster, yet faces the challenge of sharing the symmetric key to other party. To enjoy the benefit of both the system, following process is used. In step 1, we will encrypt the message by symmetric key. In step 2, encrypt the above symmetric key using the public key of the receiver. St step 3, send encrypted message as derived in step 1 and encrypted symmetric key as derived in step 2 to receiver. Step 4, receiver will decrypt symmetric key using private key of the receiver. Step 5, with the help of above symmetry key, receiver can decrypt the message. When objective is to ensure message confidentiality, integrity and non-repudiation, the most effective method would be to create a message digest and encrypt the message digest. Please note, message digest means the same thing as hash. So, our objective is confidentiality, that is encrypt message by receiver's public key. For integrity and non-reputation, we need to encrypt hash by sender's private key. 
so if you see both the options are relevant in option a here senders private key is used for message digest and Receives public key is used to encrypt the symmetric key. Like other question here, message is not directly encrypted by you encrypted by using receives public key. So here first step what they did is message is first encrypted with symmetric key and then in second step that particular symmetric key is encrypted by using receives public key. So here both symmetric and asymmetric functions have been combined. To save the cost. A commercial website uses asymmetric encryption where there is one private key for the server and corresponding public keys made available to the customer. This ensures authenticity of the customer, authenticity of the website, confidentiality of the message from the website and non reputation from customer. So our answer here will be authenticity of the website. So if customer can able to decrypt the message using public key of the website because public key is available with all the customers then it ensures that message has been sent from that particular website only and that will serve as authenticity of particular website. Let us have final recap. So if CISA question objective is about the confidentiality you need to answer encrypt using receiver's public key. If objective is about authentication or integrity, you need to answer create hash of the message and encrypt the hash using sender's private key because sender's private key is something unique. If objective is about confidentiality and authentication or confidentiality and authentication and integrity, your answer should be there will be two factor one will be hash and other will be message itself hash to be encrypted using sender's private key and message to be encrypted using receiver's public key in both the option thanks for watching please visit datainfosec.com for more such videos